Now, what is the FBM versus FBA? Like, like I mentioned before, this is one of the Amazon FBA warehouses. And FBM, of course, is you fulfill the orders yourself. Now, a few industry names, because there were a lot of beginners in the room, so let's go through a few of the, the beginner names. So FBA, of course, is fulfilled by Amazon. FBM is, um, is fulfilled by Merchant. VA is a virtual assistant. Uh, with someone that works for you virtually and then most of the time in this industry these days they're working from home. When we first started we used to use a company in Cebu in the Philippines called Support Save and we used to pay $895 per person US over there. Now these days we are obviously moved on and we no longer do that so that's why we get started from a dollar an hour because that place at Support Save was a, a great big huge room that had 400 booths in it and you basically pay $895, you get one person in a booth. You don't have to spend that much money anymore. So outsourcing from a dollar an hour, I'm not going to go into outsourcing because we've already done that on a, on a previous night, but if you want to know where to get staff from a dollar an hour, there's a link there, just follow that through and it shows you, it's got you all the links, there's no, it's all free, and you can, it teaches you all about how to get them and how to train them. So another term we use is, is drop shipping. Now, drop shipping means that the true term for dropshipping is that you list items, you sell items, and then you get paid first before you buy the item. So of course the difference with FBA and dropshipping is with FBA you've got to buy the products, you've got to send them to the Amazon warehouse, and then they sell and then you get paid. With dropshipping, you list the items, they sell, you get paid, and then you buy the products, and then the supplier ships direct to the customer. So is everyone clear on that? Feel free to ask if you're not. No. You're not clear on it? No. Okay, so you understand about FBA, how that works. With drop shipping, you list a product and then it sells, you get paid, money is in your bank, and then you then log on to your supplier, order it, and supplier ships to your customer. So your cash flow positive. You okay on that? Yep. Cool. Okay, so if, I'm not going, I'm not going to drop you tonight because we've done that on another night, but if you want to know more about it, there's another link there. It's a free workshop where you can follow through to what that's all about. And again, these slides for the people who just came in last are available. Uh, I'll put a link at the end of tonight where you can download the slides for free with does all the links. Yeah? Drop shipping, does it, um, in terms of timelines, does it take longer to do it that way for the person to... No. The product, then to do it the you only use, there's four criteria for a dropship supplier and one of them is they must be able to dispatch within two business days. Oh. And you only use local suppliers. Okay. okay, so another term we use a lot is private labelling. Private labelling is simply when you take an, an item and you put your own, your own label and you put your own label on. On this particular own Bormer AG, that's owned by a guy called Steve Mills, which is also a company called Edison's in Australia, and that's a private label. And you guys can do the same thing. You can take your top selling items and, and private label them. Now, some people will say, go and get something that's not selling now and private label that, bring it in a container. I personally think it's a very, very dangerous thing to do. I prefer to take something that's already selling really well, one of your top selling items, like maybe a drop shipping item, and then you can buy one. You can put, get a label made, slap your label on, photograph it, and list it and test it. Worst case scenario is you, you, you completely screwed up the name, it's a dog's breakfast no one buys it, pull the label off and sell it because it was already one of your top selling items. So it's pretty hard to lose money because it was already a top selling item. All you did was put your label on it. Now you shouldn't be making, you shouldn't be mucking up your label because you get them surveyed. There's many companies there that you can get surveyed. You can even just go to half a dozen of your family and friends say, guys, I need your honest opinion. Does this name I've made up, does it give you the feeling of trust and confidence? Yes or no? Decide, I need your honest opinion, don't worry about hurting my feelings. Does it give you the feeling of trust and confidence? Yes or no? If it does, awesome. If not, go back and get it changed. Is there a difference between private labelling and a logo? Yes. Your private label is a name. Your logo is your, you know, is the graphic. Oh. Now, there's many ways to come up with private labels. I'm not going to private label tonight, but you know, you can take a lot of Australian names and convert them to German or European, and suddenly it sounds flash. 
What are the legalities around private labelling? One thing, I, yeah, things I can't answer tonight, okay. anything to do with tax or, or legal, and even Lincoln's giving me another warning about that, as my lawyers have done as well. I can't give any advice on tax advice or on legal advice because um, I don't have a Australian Financial Services licence and I, I don't want to get one. Do, Lincoln, could you answer, answer that question? Sorry? Could, could you answer that question? I just wondered whether there, was, whether there were laws around it, not what... I don't want you to explain it, but are there laws around private labelling? Well, it depends on whether there's one in your list. It's basically you just um, have a look and see if somebody's already got the name that you're looking at. Okay. Um, that's what you've got to be really careful of, and, and, it's, and it's not too similar. This, this is just really, really basic, top level stuff. It, yeah. it gets into a lot more detail, but um, yeah, the, um, basically. Don't pinch um, someone else's don't, name. Yeah, don't pinch someone else's name or anything <laughs> yeah. similar, even remotely similar to what somebody else has got because you're just asking for trouble. We've we had a lot of um, tax questions come up lately. So, so Lincoln's is very nice. is offered to do a presentation on all about the, the tax and the legal stuff. So we're going to try and get that um, organised in the next six or eight weeks to get Lincoln up here and to talk for an hour all about the tax and all the legal implications. So um, thanks, Lincoln, for offering to do that. And uh, we'll try and get that organised as soon as possible. Okay, so um, private labelling. Of course, Bunnings, of course, have their private label, which is um, the Azito range. Um, the great thing about private labelling is no one can undercut you. So with Amazon, as I'm going to get to, everything in Amazon has a UPC code, basically a barcode, a UPC, you know, universal product code. So everything has a code. Now, if you have your own private label, you have your own barcode. You have your own number. Because of that, you own that number, you own that buy box on Amazon, no one can undercut you. And that's a big advantage of having your own private label. So, and I mentioned before, the best, a great way to start with private labelling is taking a top selling item that you've already got, like a dropship item as an example, or an item that you import, and putting your label on that. Okay, so Amazon FBA warehouses, there's over 400 of them around the world now. And of course, there's now two in Australia. That's another picture of another one. These things are just enormous. It's like taking an airport and putting a roof over it. They're just huge. Um, okay, we've done that. Pick and pack. Done that. Okay. Now, the big thing with FBA, yes? Sorry, just one quick question. Sure. On the FBA, the warehousing, are there volume restrictions? No, you can send one item. The good thing with FBA is if you, all things been equal. If there's two people selling this item, one's on FBA, so in other words, one's been sent to the Amazon warehouse, the one at the Amazon warehouse will appear higher in the search results. And also, because Amazon Prime, and I'm going to get to what the great thing about Amazon Prime is in a second. So if there's no other FBA sellers selling this product, then you've just found yourself an opportunity. And of course, there's a lot of opportunities because a lot of things, you know, less than 10% of the products are on FBA. 90% aren't. 10% of the products are on FBA, 90% aren't. Oh, so we've got a good opportunity. Huge opportunity. And I'll show you how to find those opportunities mm -hmm. tonight. So, to, of course, to be an FBA seller, you need to send your inventory to Amazon. I know I'm harping on this, but it's amazing how many um, people over the last couple of days came to me after the presentation and said, do I have to send my products to Amazon to be on FBA? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I've added a few more lines to these slides. Okay. Changing hats, Amazon Prime. So instead of everyone here is here because they want to be a seller. Now change hats and just become an Amazon user. Now Amazon has got this thing called Prime, which costs last week it was seven six dollars ninety nine uh, per month. It's basically less than hundred bucks a year. So why do people want to pay hundred bucks a year to join Amazon Prime? And let me show you. So last week it was six dollars ninety ninety nine with the first thirty days free. Here's why um, people join. But first of all, Amazon Prime's got over 100 million members in the US. And of course, it certainly makes sense that we're going to follow America. We, we hate to admit it, but we tend to follow American pretty much most things in this country. So there's over 100 million in the US. And as you can see, it keeps on growing. So it's very, very, very strong. 
Now this is why people join. For your seven bucks a month, in Australia you get free delivery on millions of items. Plus, you can also get free delivery on anything you buy from Amazon USA that costs more than $49 or $49 or more. You also get free delivery to Australia. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you pay you seven bucks. You also get the fast shipping. You also get exclusive access to Prime Originals, things like, you know, the Grand Tour, which is, only, which is made by Amazon, plus a whole lot of other Amazon shows, plus a whole lot of top movies, TV shows, etc., etc. They've got there's thousands, or tens of thousands of movies um, and shows, TV shows you can watch if you're an Amazon Prime member. So you don't have to have, you know, Apple TV or whatever or Netflix or Stan, you can just have this instead, it's like a substitute. You also get access to a ton of games, so if you've got any people in the family who love games, you've got access to a ton of games which are always changing every month. You also get over two million, access to over two million songs. So you no longer have, you know, you don't have to subscribe to a, you know, Apple Music or whatever, you can subscribe to this instead. And all these things, by the way, you can download and, and watch them, listen to them, read them offline. So if you're going on a, a, on a plane trip or you know, you've got kids and you're going on a big you know, family trip somewhere, they can download this stuff onto their iPads or their phones or their computers or whatever. There's also over a thousand e-books and magazines that continually change. You can also read at any time as well. Again, you can do it offline, so you can put them on your iPad if you're you know, going on a big train trip or whatever and watch this stuff when you've got no internet or read it. So this is why people pay their seven bucks to be it. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because the majority of people when they have Prime, they only want to buy from Prime sellers. In other words, people who sent their goods to an Amazon warehouse so they get free shipping. So when someone searches for something, if they're a Prime member, they quickly learn to click this Prime button. So in this case, I was searching for a drone, and if you click the Prime button, now it only shows you the items that are on Prime. In other words, the items are in an Amazon warehouse. Everybody else disappears, which is why it's very important to have things on Amazon Prime. Now, up here, up, about two years ago, I think it was, it, Amazon would show you how many items were in each category then they stopped it. And we figured out that if you put some min a minus sign and some rubbish there, it, it, it appears back again. You can now see how many items are there, are in that category. And I'm going to talk a lot more about that tonight. So we can look at how, how many items are in any category in, on, in Amazon for every category. So in this particular case, there's 4,000 results um, with Prime unticked. Now if I tick that Prime, it dropped to 400. And this is where I've mentioned before about the 90-10 the rule. For, for the majority of categories, you're going to find around about 90% of items are not on FBA. Okay, so down here as well, this is, if you look at any item, any listing on Amazon, if you go to the very bottom down here, it shows you how many sellers are on Amazon Prime. Okay. Just right down the bottom down here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now here I click the Prime button, and as you can see, it's dropped the results from 4,000 to 400. So there's 400 sellers selling these drones on it, they've sent to FBA warehouse out of the 4,000. Everyone clear on that? Any questions? Yep? Have you got any information on fees for actually stopping? Yeah, I'm going to get to fees tonight. Um, so step one for selling on Amazon, of course, is you open an account. Now, in the US, you can open up an individual account and also open up a, a professional account. In Australia, you can only have a professional account, which is $49 plus GST. That's the only option that we have. Now, uh, although it's $49, eBay continually, sorry, Amazon continually comes up with promotions where you don't have to pay. And there's many, many people who have paid, like, since they opened, they've only paid, like, one payment of the $49. And there's currently another one, uh, which is running right now till the end of October. So if you're an Amazon, um, if you have an Amazon seller account, you should have got that email that says that you get free till October. And then we'll see what happens after October. But as many people have paid, have never paid at all or paid one payment ever since they opened. So um, in Australia, of course, we have a huge opportunity at the moment because people say, well, what do I sell on Amazon? Well, isn't the logical place to look at what's the eBay top-selling items? 
because people who the same stuff that sells on eBay and Amazon. We can look at eBay and find their top selling items. So I'm going to give a whole lot of ideas about how to find products tonight. But the first one is always look at what the top selling items are on eBay. And I've given there's a link here, which is a it's another free link, which is a complete workshop shows you all about how to find all the eBay top selling items. And you don't have to buy any software. You can do all this stuff without spending one cent and find all the top selling items in eBay in any category. So then. There's obviously a whole lot of opportunities there. Now, with Amazon, the rank is a huge thing. Everything on Amazon is ranked. Every category, all the products are ranked in order. And at a, every category, the item who's number one is the item that sells the most in that category in that hour. It updates every hour. So this particular item was number 219 in men's hiking and trekking shoes. So the question is, is 219 good or bad? And of course the answer to that is how many items are in that category? If there's 220 items in that category, it's bad. If there's 100,000 in that category, it's good. And that's why I was talking earlier on about, so if you can figure out how many items are in any category first, you can then work out, is this good or bad? Now, I'm going to be teaching about how to do the manual way, but I'm also going to show you software. And there's all different types of software, which I'll show you tonight, that you can, that you can subscribe to, which does it all automatically for you. So, and I'm going to show you that as well. So don't think, oh, I've got to always do this. But you don't. You can do it manually. Then you can outsource to a VA, or you can use software, which does it all for you as well. So or you can do both. So um, sales rank on Amazon is velocity. Whenever we talk about the word velocity, velocity is how many times an item sells in a month. So we call a velocity. So profit's always about profit per sale times how many times that item sells a month. So if it makes, you know, I don't pick a number, fifty dollars profit per sale and it sells, you know, ten times in a month, obviously the profit of that item is five hundred dollars. Okay, so it's velocity times profit per sale. So sales reckon Amazon is velocity which is how recently an item sold. That's the way that Amazon looks. It looks about how often an item sells. Things that sell <coughs> most recently are, up, are number one, and it goes down from there, and it's updated hourly. So if it sells once per week, it's high. If it's, it's many sales per day, it's low. And low, of course, being, number, being one. Update, done that. OK, so this particular item is got, it's number 1,238 in beauty. Okay, and it comes down to how many are in that particular category. So this is how you do research 101 on Amazon. Go to any, here I went to the little arrow at the top of Amazon on every page. It's got a little arrow, you scroll down, choose any category. I scrolled to home improvement. I went, then I went over to all home improvement and DIY. And then I found this particular item, beauty and personal care. I typed in the minus DS, just some rubbish, just, just, just rubbish, so I could now see there's 90,000 results in that category. So that category has got 90,000 other listings in that category. So then I can go and look at particular items and know and work out my ranking. So the other thing you can also do, in every category it says best sellers. So Amazon tells you what the best sellers are in every single category all over the planet, not just Australia, but all the other countries as well. And most countries buy the same stuff. Obviously, there's idiosyncrasies between, you know, um, take um, the UK buys, you know, obviously Liverpool kind of, you know, f soccer kind of stuff, football things. But as a general rule, Canada, USA, Australia, UK, Ireland, and South Africa buy the same products. Obviously, there's idiosyncrasies for the different countries, but we generally all buy the same stuff. Okay, so the best sellers are continually changing though as items run out of stock and if they've got promotions, um, seasonal obviously, you know, in Australia of course the, the, the summer stuff, the Nerf guns and the swimming pools and blow up toys, all that, that kind of stuff has all died off for the time so things do go up and down. Okay, so Amazon, like it says up here, Amazon best sellers updated hourly and it shows you all the top best selling items. Category Every category shows the best sellers. Oh, yeah. Now, a huge opportunity, with, which we've done, found this, we've been doing this for a long time, over 10 years, bundling rocks on Amazon. 
and it does also rocks on eBay. But Amazon is a great source of finding bundling products for Amazon and eBay because it tells you what, which ones to do. And what it does, Amazon says, customers who bought this item also bought. And that's just gold. So Amazon's telling you, this person bought that, they bought this, and they also bought a case with it, or they bought batteries with it, or they bought whatever. So it's telling you right here. Now, and the, the exciting thing about this is that if this thing's already on Amazon, and it's got you know, 10,000 feedback, it's very hard for you to ever get into that market. Because if we have a rule, anything over 400, we won't touch it. But if we come out with a brand new UPC code, because we now combine this with batteries, or we combine it with a case, or we combine it with XYZ, we've now got a whole brand new product. And then we can start at scratch number one, and, not, and we don't have any competition. So we don't have to compete with everyone else, because we've got our own product, because we've bundled. And how do we bundle? Because it tell, tells us here what to bundle it with. And I'm going to talk a bit more about this, about how you can get these products from your supplier, uh, which can, we can gives a, a, a wide instead of a deep, but we'll get to that. But bundling rocks, and you can use the same information for eBay and Amazon in your own website. Okay, um, it, on Amazon it tells you how many other sellers are on selling that same item down here. Again, down the bottom of the product, right there, there's two other sellers with that same product. So you know what your competition is. Now, Amazon's powered by reviews. Don't ever make the mistake of selling anything that's, that's dodgy quality because it'll bite you. But the great thing is we can let the market tell us if anything's got bad quality. Like it says here, do not sell low quality or non-durable products or anything that's got three stars or less. However, if things do have three stars or less, read the reviews. Can you improve it? If someone's written, this is, this is terrible because it's got no manual, or the manual's written in Chinglish and I can't understand it, that you've just found a huge opportunity. You just rewrite the manual. And it's not hard to rewrite a manual. It might take you an hour, might take you longer. That's how like Rosalind Kogan got started. He started rewriting manuals for TVs. So anything, has it got a bad review? If you can fix the review, then you can sell the same product and your competitor's got three stars, you, you write a great manual, you get five stars, everything being equal, you now go straight above the, your competitor. So anything with a bad review is possibly an awesome opportunity. And we can read the reviews on every product on Amazon, plus we can go to eBay and look at the feedback for any item on there. So if, if someone on eBay is selling the same item, if you go to the negative reviews for any seller selling this item, we can read it there. So we let the market do all the decision for us. That's why I like things that got some competition, because the market's already checked it out for us. So only sell quality items. Always check the Amazon and or eBay reviews. So because we're in a new country for Amazon, and they might not, these might not be sold on Amazon today, but they're already on eBay, we can read their reviews on eBay. Can you improve a product on that? So we use the 5% strategy. Now, most people in business know that the 80 20 rule, or the Pareto principle, is that most businesses, 80% of their turnover comes from only 20% of their products. It's the same with eBay and Amazon sellers. Most eBay and Amazon sellers, 80% of their, their turnover comes from only 20% of their products. So, what we do is we go high, we look at what's the top 5% of in any category. What's the top 5% top of that category? So if it's got X amount of products, what's the top 5%? Now we use software, it does it automatically. And I'll show you tonight how to do that. But you can do it manually as well. So we're just looking at, there's X amount of products in that category, what's the top 5%? Because they're the fastest moving products. So we narrow it down. So we only focus on listings with few competitors. They've got no more than 400 reviews. Because if it's got more than 400 views, it's, it's going to have a, a pretty challenging time trying to get in there and get that market share. That's why we bundle. Search for non-optimised listed products. And I'm going to go through about some optimization. Like I said, it'll be enough to make you dangerous. Because if you, can, if you know what has to be optimised, and you see a seller who hasn't optimised, you know you've got an opportunity. Plus, we can use software that automatically goes through the optimization, discovers sellers who have not optimised, and shows you the opportunity itself. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not, trying to, I'm not standing up here tonight because I've got some software that I want to flog you. There's a rules in, the, in here that we can't, nothing gets 
um, pitch from stage, nothing. So the software I'm going to show you, do I make two cents out of it? No. It's the software that we use. So look for things like poor reviews, poor photos, not many photos, poor ad copy, improve the product from reviews. Um, yep. What do you mean by non, what does non-optimized mean? Optimized, whether it's on a website or eBay or Amazon, is about taking a li your listing and improving it for the search results. Making it easier to find. Exactly. Oh, it's also known in the industry as SEO or search engine optimization. Oh, so you're making any item that's, it, it can be easily found and indexed by a search engine, whether it's like Google for your website or it's Cassini, which is eBay's uh, search engine, or for Amazon. So it's, it's all optimization. And then, like I mentioned before, the beauty of Amazon and eBay is there's over 90% of sellers do not optimize. So we're looking for no or few FBA sellers, because obviously that's where the, opp the big opportunity there. So first bit of software I'm going to show you is, is um, now a lot of the software doesn't work in Australia. Um, so we had to go through a learning, so we use eGrow in Australia, and we've been using this now for well over a year. And our st my, my team has got very used to it, and they, in fact they've started using it in other countries now as well. They're, they're really enjoying it. So, and what eGrow does, besides many things, but like most software, 80-20 or really 5.95 for you know anyone who's computers long enough knows it. Whatever, well, it's Microsoft Word or Excel or whatever. You tend to use less than five percent of it to get the results that you want. It's the same with this. The big thing that we're looking for is the rating. So it goes through any category and it goes through and it figures out which sellers have got crappy listings, and it tells you. It rates them out of five. So we're looking th with things that have got a low rating because it means we can come in there and we can do much better. So we don't have to go through you know, 10,000 listings, it does it all for us. We can just sort by that rating. <coughs> Click, all sorted. So this is um, for Amazon Australia? This is for Amazon Australia. Would it work for Amazon US? Yes it does. So Are the ratings based on the reviews? It's based on all sorts of things. How many, um, uh, for instance, how many how many photos, how many bullet points? You know, on, on Amazon we should have f minimum five bullet points. It, for those, you know, the eBay sellers, we should have twenty bullet points. Um, with a, the, our image quality on Amazon should be a thousand one pixels. It looks at all those different aspects, and it, it comes up with the number. I'm going to get more optimization tonight.